we have uh, recently hung our engine and uh, went together pretty well. You know, went on the motor mounts pretty well. Um, we did have we did have end up getting the two bottom ones down here. We we got the uh, bolts through there and let it you know just barely put those nut on, nuts on and on both the bottom mounts and then we kind of wiggled around on the top ones here um, and we got this one in and then the other one over there was just barely not fitting and gave it a couple good whacks with a rubber mallet while we were pushing the bolt through and that got it through so that was nice uh, took the whole thing from the time that we hooked up the chain or, you know or started to hook up the chain to the engine hoist to put thing putting all these um, on was about two hours um, and that was with three people could have done it with two I think um, so it was pretty good didn't uh, didn't end up being as hard as I thought it could have been so um, since then I mounted the prop governor here that's easy just a couple bolts there's a gasket and uh, also mounted the throttle body down here that does not come attached and this is a engine by the way uh, Lycoming IO 540 engine that come, came directly through vans uh, from the Lycoming factory. So this is a an, uh, pretty pretty standard engine, like as far as attaching to the RV10 goes. Not a lot of modifications are going to be needed, which is uh, something that uh, we were shooting for. Um, one kind of small gotcha for me, at least, was you're supposed to put this metal bracket right here on uh, in between the throttle body and the engine. This bracket is uh, sent from Vans, and they sent one sent me one gasket with it, and it turned out that well I was I needed a gasket for between it and the engine, and between the bracket and the um, throttle body, so two gaskets. I only had one, so I took the there was a plate that was down here before the throttle body was on, and I just took the gasket that was with that plate and cut used the good gasket that Vans sent traced a hole in it because the ga the gasket that was on the plate was just solid and what else we uh, mounted the alternator that was pretty easy just followed the directions on that and also mounted our second alternator right there that is normally um, a vacuum pad vacuum pump pad but uh, it can also be used to put other devices, obviously, like a second alternator. This is a small backup alternator. It only kicks out 8 amps. Um, what else? Attached the um, oil and fuel pressure sensors. Uh, those are pretty straightforward. They just screw right into that bar. Um, went ahead and did some electrical stuff recently, too. Uh, attached the ANL here. Which just has, a, in a way, it's kind of a type. It's a really a type of fuse. It's a 60 amp. That thing will blow if it if it pulls more than uh, 60 amps. But the cool thing is, it just does it like it. If it's a quick little spike, it won't burn it out. It kind of takes a a uh, duration of you know too much voltage going through there, or too much amperage rather. And then uh, use the little bus bar right here to attach that to. This is our shunt. It's a shunt, and that um, tells you how many amps the system's using. You hook that up to a gauge, in our case, to our Skyview. And then also, this uh, ANL attaches down here to the starter contactor. And uh, apparently, it doesn't matter which side of the battery connects to it, it can go to either side. Um, by default, the the kit came with the hole right here and the battery just pops right out and it's real convenient like that and uh, another little gotcha on the starter well not much of a gotcha but just something that's not that intuitive there's two connectors here one of them labeled I and the other is labeled S and uh, you don't really need to use the one that's labeled I um, you can the one that's labeled I is to you can hook it up to a sensor or a light or something that'll tell you if the a starter is engaged. So in our case, we're not going to use that. And I don't think too many people do, but I don't know, maybe they do. Um, the S is you connect it up to the ignition switch or the push start button. All right. Um, oh, another thing that is kind of something that you have to decide on your own, which is I'm finding out a lot of the things on this part of the build, um, is that uh, you just have to decide where you want to 
make your hole, make a hole or several holes for pass-throughs for wires. Uh, I bought this from Home Depot. It's just a um, three-fourths inch electrical conduit pass-through, so it's stainless steel. And um, there's these fancy ones that you can buy that are specifically made, you know, for for uh, firewall pass-throughs. Uh, they're pretty expensive. Well, I, th I think they're like 40 or 50 bucks. And I think this will do just a fine job because it's you know it's stainless steel, so it's not just gonna you know incinerate if, if there was a problem with the fire up front. Um, and then when we're done passing wires through, we'll just squirt a bunch of um, fire you know 3M fire barrier or uh, red RTV or something like that in there. Um, I don't. I hope that this three fourths is gonna be enough. You know, there's a little bit of room in there, but might have to add a second one and. Um, so that's it.